Hello and welcome. Introduction. I'm starting a new video series on the ARM processor and this video is an introductory uh, video to the video series. Now, uh, whether it is an iPhone or an Android device, the chances that uh, are it is powered by an ARM processor or an ARM chip. Now, these ARM processors are popular and widely used. And the reason for its popularity is that, um, as mentioned a few moments ago, it is widely used in smartphones and tablets. And also it is extensively used in uh, Internet of Things devices, IoT devices like smart home gadgets, wearables, industrial sensors, and many more. And it is also popular in embedded system, which we are concerned about in, uh, in my channel. And they are, these devices, these processes are, are basically the brains of these devices. And uh, they range from household appliances to automotive electronics. Um, ARM are also known for their energy efficiency, therefore making them ideal for portable devices where battery life is crucial. ARM architecture can be customized, uh, thereby enabling manufacturers to tailor the processor to very specific applications or performance requirements. And also it comes in a wide range of performance levels from low power microcontrollers to high performance devices for servers and data centers. Types of ARM processors. Now there are quite a few types of ARM uh, processor around, uh, but let us first look at uh, the classic ARM uh, processor. Now here I've listed uh, just three, but there are others uh, like, for example, uh, there is the ARM1, the very first uh, ARM processor, uh, as I know, then there is an ARM2 and then ARM6 and so on. But these um, ARM1, ARM2 has been superseded uh, because things have changed so much uh, over the years and uh, things have evolved. So I've listed only uh, three here. Uh, there, you can find, uh, wait a minute, you can find a list of all, well, of most of the uh, ARM processor from Wikipedia. I've included, here's the link uh, if you're interested. I've, I've provided the link in the description. So, um, so you can head to this website and you'll find uh, the whole list of uh, ARM processors. All right, let's just let's get back to this. So here I've listed uh, uh, three uh, classic ARM processors. First one is ARM 7 series. Uh, the ARM 7 series is known for their simplicity and low power consumption and is commonly used in embedded system, industrial automation, and early mobile devices. Next is the ARM9 series, and these uh, ARM processors offered improved performance and additional features uh, such as multimedia capabilities, and they are used in smartphones, PDA, PDAs, uh, networking equipment, automotive systems, and so on. And then there is the ARM 11 series. Basically, these processors powered early smartphones and multimedia devices. Uh, they have features like uh, video playback, 3D graphics to um, uh, on mobile platforms. Next um, are the what we call the modern ARM processors. All right, so. You have the Cortex X series, 
and this are uh, custom CPU core design tailored for maximum performance, targeting smartphones and other high performance computing devices. They have uh, higher clock speeds, improved single threaded performance and greater uh, overall efficiency. Then there is the Cortex A series that these uh, processes are designed for high performance applications uh, such as smartphones, tablets, laptops, and servers. And these processor features advanced architecture optimized for tasks like multitasking, multimedia processing, and artificial intelligence. Then there is the Cortex R series, tailored for real time applications requiring high reliability and deterministic performance. Uh, they are commonly used in automotive systems, industrial control, and storage devices where timing constraints are critical. And then there is the Cortex-M series. Now, uh, I'll be focusing on this Cortex-M series uh, uh, in this, um, on this channel. So optimize this uh, the M series is optimized for microcontroller applications, offering, some, offering a balance of performance, power efficiency, and cost effectiveness. Uh, there are processors like uh, Cortex M0, Cortex M3, Cortex M4. Uh, actually, to be more specific, I'll be focusing on the Cortex M4, and then uh, Cortex M7. And these are widely used in embedded system, IoT devices, wearables, and consumer electronics. And then there is the Neoverse series. Now these are designed for infrastructure applications. Uh, by that I mean cloud computing, data centers, uh, networking, and Neoverse uh, N1 and Neoverse E1 are examples in this series. And these are optimized for scalability, throughput, and power efficiency in server and networking environments. The Cortex M4. So why Cortex M4? Well, uh, the Arduino Uno uh, R4 uh, feature here. Uh, this is the uh, Arduino Uno R4 Minima, and this is the Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi. By the way, these two uh, images are from SparkFun. I uh, need to acknowledge that. They're not my pictures. And these uh, boards feature the Renaissance RA4M1 32-bit ARM Cortex M4 processor. All right, so, but I won't be using those boards. Instead, I've chosen to use the, the Texas Instrument TI Kiva C Launchpad Evaluation Board. All right, so um, that's because I find that the I can get the um, the software to change to develop assembly language, uh, Cortex M4 assembly language programs easily uh, with the, uh, that's my experience. Uh, I could be wrong, uh, but I find that the, I can get all the two chains, two chains um, tools to develop the uh, Cortex M4 assembly language easier with the uh, TI, uh, Tiva C Launchpad Evaluation Board. And this board uses the TM4C123GH 6PM microcontroller. Uh, that is a 32 bit ARM Cortex uh, M4 processor. Let's take a look at some of the features of this particular microcontroller or micro uh, processor. So the core is an ARM Cortex M4 F processor core. Now the F here stands for the floating point unit. All right. So 
and then the performance you get at 80 megahertz 100 uh, DMIPS. Now DMIPS is the dice so, uh, stones uh, MIPS instruction per second. Uh, that is a computer benchmark uh, program. All right. And then we have flash of 256 kilobytes of single cycle flash memory, uh, system SRAM of 32 k byte single cycle uh, SRAM, and then the EEPROM of 200 and ki uh, kilobytes, or, and then internal ROM, internal uh, ROM loaded with the TivaWare for C series software. So these are some of the features uh, of the of this particular processor, the TM4C one two three GH six PM. Now I've taken this from the um, TI website. So if you're interested, uh, you can download the data sheet from this particular website. I've included this link in the description. Prerequisites. Now to follow these, uh, the next video series uh, on the uh, ARM processor, I recommend that you get the following. Uh, for the hardware, uh, you will need a the Texas Instrument or TI EK dash TM four C one two three GXL Tiva C Launch Pad Evaluation Board. Now. At the time of making this video, that is uh, March 2024, the cost of this board is approximately uh, 23 US dollar. Uh, this is almost the same cost as a uh, Arduino Uno R4 Minima. And the next thing you want to uh, that you will need is the software. Now this is. Uh, the evaluation copy of the Kyle Microvision MDK. So this is the uh, the link uh, to that web page where you can download the MDK ARM uh, software. All right. So you will need the hardware and the software. Now this MDK ARM software, uh, you you only require to get the evaluation copy. All right. Hey, that's it for this uh, video. Uh, please join me in the next video where I will show you how to program the TI Tiva C Launchpad Evaluation Board. Okay, thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.